Hi, I'm Marcus Thompson for, for the Boss Life channel. Thank you for showing. Happy holidays. Uh, today I would like to talk about a, a poorly ran franchise versus just a bad team and how it crosses over into life in general. Let's get into it. Now, the, today's topic comes from a UCLA quarterback who's in college currently right now. And he has popped off saying that, he, and I'm paraphrasing here, he has said that he would rather wait and get drafted by a better quality team than to get drafted early and go to a poorly ran team because it could be detrimental to his career. And a lot of people get crossed up on this saying, oh, you play football for a living, you get paid millions of dollars to do this. You should be grateful and not talk trash like that, including one Mel Kuyper who, who had rubbed them wrong. And I must say, I agree with the kid because that's a very boss move. He's calling his shots because he see bull crap when, he, when it's in front of him. Now, let's take a deeper look into this, shall we? When you look at teams like the Tampa Bay Rays, Florida Marlins, even the Cleveland Browns, and at times the Cincinnati Bengals, there's plenty of other teams out there I could go on and on and on who are poorly ran franchises, meaning from the top down, ain't nothing good about it. Prime example, Cleveland Brown tried to make a trade earlier this year, but before they could uh, get, the, get the trade official by the NFL, everybody celebrated and went home. Now, the problem with that is that they didn't finish tying up their loose ends on their end to complete the deal. They just went home for whatever reason. I can't explain to you, nobody can. And so the trade never went through. That's a poorly ran franchise. And so people are looking at this kid, telling me, if you're so good, you should be able to turn things around. That's not true. That is not true whatsoever. Because a team like that can't get out of their own way. They, they, they just, they're clowns. In clown shoes trying to run against Usain Bolt. All they're gonna do is trip and fall over themselves. And I, that's why I can understand him and I can reason with him. They say it's like the Eli Manning uh, issue back in, what, 2001, 2002, when he forced his way out of the trade pick for San Diego Chargers and go to New York. Mind you, since being drafted, Eli has became a borderline Hall of Fame quarterback, has won two Super Bowls, and has won a Super Bowl MVP. And, mind you, for a better part of his career, especially in his prime, he has only known one head coach, one coaching staff, and one general manager. That's stability, folks. That's stability. For at least over a decade, he only knew those people, so the continuity was there. And the team that he forced himself out of was San Diego Chargers, and in return, they got Phillip Rivers. Which, is, which turned out to be that he's a borderline Hall of Famer just without all the extra credentials. And now, mind you, San Diego at the early parts of the 2000s were a Super Bowl contenders. They could never get out of their own way to win anything. So throughout the years, that team has been depleted. They have seen several GMs, several coaching staff. It's, it's just turning over and over, it's just keep turning over. And every year, just about, this quarterback has to find a new way to learn a new playbook. So there's no continuity. And to top it all off, they were forced more or less to move to LA because they couldn't get right with their, with their current city, San Diego. So they moved to LA to a lesser of a stadium. Usually a football stadium can hold about 80,000 people, but their stadium, their new stadium is a soccer stadium that holds no more than 30,000 people. And the ironic thing about it, they're having trouble filling that up. They have about 20, 25,000 people show up to their game. So that says a lot about how poorly ran that team has been. And that's why they would never win anything or get good draft picks. And to add, add more fuel to the flame, last year they had issues signing their number one draft pick. Why? Because over uh, some wording in his contract, Literally, a couple of words that would change the way that they pay him and they fought him tooth and nail over that and it costed him some games. It was a very petty fight that 
they should have just threw a couple of bucks at him and say, okay, here, fine, let's, let's get it going. Because turn out, he has became one of their most productive players on that team, period. So that goes to show you that when somebody just tell you, hey, just accept it because you should be grateful is wrong, especially when you worked your butt off. Because you can end up on a poorly ran franchise. Now, a bad team, every team in history of sports and business or whatever has had some bad years, has some down years. That's just the nature of the beast. And, you know, that's just Father Tom doing his thing. And so you got teams like the Yankees, St. Louis Cardinals, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Boston Red Sox, the New England Patriots, somewhat the Dallas Cowboys, and many other franchises who you look to them to always be in the thick of things, including the Pittsburgh Steelers, just always in the thick of things to win it all. They're always winning. They always winning. You look at their overall record since they been since their inception. They got this. You see this long streak of winning that consistency and you wonder why you ask why and you go over turnovers in, 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 in the franchise as far as ownership, as far as coaching staff, so on and so forth. So it matters uh, how well the team is ran. So a great player, all he had to do to show up and show out. And they'll be right back into the thick of things in no time flat. And that's why a lot of people like the San Francisco 49ers, because they have a history of being properly ran, just having bad teams here and there. Heck, they just came away from a, a, a loss at the Super Bowl well, about four years ago. So that, that, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm praising this guy on such a boss move. The person I'm mad at are the people who goes against it, like Mel Kuyper who has 20, 30 years at ESPN nonetheless. He's a boss over there. What he says goes, especially when it comes to draft picks. They don't make a move on a draft until he says so. And he gets paid well to do it. And, and it trips me out because he works his butt off to get to where he's at. And he's willing to stay with the best, which is the ESPN. It ain't like he's on ESPN uh, 2, 3, or some obscure ESPN channel that shows table tennis. He's, he, he's, he's on the best one. And it ain't like he's threatening to leave there for like NBC Sports or FS1, FS2. No, because he can't boss like that, like he can at ESPN. He, he's at the top. He's the pinnacle. Well, he says goes, and it trumps about just 99% of the other people in that industry. That's just the way it is. And that's a boss move. So for him to go around saying what the UCLA quarterback is saying is wrong, I would have to say, no, it's very right because that's the American way. Who wants to go to MIT, learn to become an engineer with a master's degree from MIT, got hundreds of thousand dollars of student loans racked up only to work at an obscure warehouse place building their infrastructure for networking? You see what I'm saying? Getting paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. That's no punk money by any means, but that is below them. It's called standard people. So they're going to go after Microsoft. They're going to go after Google or some kind of big time tech giant that's not only going to pay them well, but allow them to be who they are and have other perks like extra time off, work from home. You know, they, they, uh, got all they got less responsibility and a lot more perks that's the american way everybody wants to work less and get the most out of it and if you could call that shot that's what becoming a boss is all about that's boss life you you want the most out, out of the littlest things as possible i can't preach that enough because that's that freedom that's where freedom start coming in when you can call your shots like that you want it in every aspect of your life, from family to your hobbies to whatever. You want to be as best as you can so you can have the freedom to call your shots to do whatever the heck it is that you want to do. Welcome to Boss Life. Uh, that's all I have on this subject right now. I'm glad you joined me today. If you like what you heard, 
please hit the subscribe button below uh, join my Facebook page the link is down below click the like button and uh, tell me your story on when you was the best at what you do and what did you do with that type of freedom when, you, when, when all the cards were on your side of the table and you were able to become a shot caller at that point be you know that that boss status for a moment just tell me tell me your stories what have you done in your life where you felt like you were just the best at what you do you know share with everybody every you know we all are bosses on a certain stage you, you ain't got to have a Mercedes or Rolls Royce or anything like that. That's just byproduct of the level of bossness you're at. So if you just drive a Honda, just tell me your bosses or boss moments you ever have. And uh, get back to me. Thank you very much. Happy holidays.